Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Yes, my hair is kind of wild and crazy today and we're just gonna have to work with it. <laughs> so today I'm going to be doing another volume of Woke TikTok because I know you guys can't watch this garbage, so I watch it for you. Yeah, so in today's volume, I'm going to be reacting to seven TikTok videos. I do have EMT on standby just in case I need some help <laughs> being resuscitated because I know this is going to be super, super crazy. So without further ado, let's just get right into these reactions. I don't really know how else to tell you this, but if you saw me dressed like this, walking down the street in my heels, pretend I shaved my beard and I had one of these, on my face, you would have no clue, all right? I don't really personally use passing as like my threshold for womanhood. I understand that a lot of trans people wanna pass, it's a goal, I respect it deeply. It is not one of mine, it's not how my fluidity functions. I don't live for the validation of other people deciding what they think that my gender passes as. I love my presentation, I don't need your validation from it, I do not receive this, and I would really caution you about policing other people's gender expressions, because it's just not your business. If you look at me and you see a man, that's your transphobia that you are projecting onto people like me, and you're just making the world less safe. All right, first of all, I got some breaking news because this particular creator, his name is James, is smiling on TikTok, and when I went to his TikTok to see some of his videos, I don't know if you can see this, but your boy is blocked. <laughs> So yeah, I can't see any of his stuff because he blocked me, which is funny because I've never interacted with him before. I didn't even know that he knew who I was. So it's kind of funny that he took the time to block me, but um, I can still see you. <laughs> Let's get into this first reaction video from this creator. So what I find funny about this most of all is the fact that he says, I don't receive this, I don't care, I don't need it, I don't wanna hear it, I don't wanna see it. But yet he's doing a full response video to somebody saying, <laughs> that he's not female passing. Let's keep it real. Let's channel in our Simon Cowell from American Idol and just keep it real because I can't be fake. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't sugarcoat for you, James. I can't do it. So you got a mask on your face and you're saying that as long as I wear this mask, you would never know that I was really a man. I can fool anybody. And I hate to break it to you, dude, but um, the chest hair, Kind of a dead giveaway, just saying. Now maybe if you cover that up with a scarf or something, I don't know, maybe, possibly you could pass as a female, I don't know. But then again, according to Dylan Mulvaney, some women have bulges, so you never know. Of course, what I find most funny about this whole video is the fact that he says, if you don't see a woman when you see me, then you are transphobic. Don't you love how they always run to the isms and the phobias and they try to mark you with something negative and some bigotry in order to justify their delusion? It's like, if you don't subscribe to my delusion, then you are the problem, then you are dangerous, then you are a bigot, you are a transphobe, you are everything that is bad with society because you don't co-sign my delusion. Now I'm sorry, but um, if that's how you see yourself, go right ahead, knock yourself out, God love you. But you cannot police my language and you definitely cannot police my mind. Can't do it. And that's the problem with this whole transgender, gender ideology movement. They want to police all of us, all of us. Every single one of us, they want us to fall in line with their ideology and if we don't, we get cast out. Cast me out, because I'm never going to co-sign delusional people. Not gonna do it. I also find it funny how he used the term policing gender. You can't police gender. Really? Because you guys love to police women, making them say cisgendered as opposed to just women. And if a biological woman doesn't want to use the term cisgendered, suddenly she gets attacked. She's a bigot. She's every bad thing in the book. Is that not policing? It is. Cult, anyone? On to the next video. My name is Horace and I'm a red-tailed hawk. In our world, I do have the body of a hawk, but while fronting, I consider myself a Therian, because I am in a human body, but my identity is still a hawk. Not all animal alters will identify this way, and I am, in fact, the only animal alter in our system who does identify this way. But I am doing my best to come to terms with living in a human body. So I have a question. How long are we supposed to pretend that this behavior is normal? and that this isn't a call or a cry for help, or that this person and many people like them are having a mental health crisis. How long are we supposed to play this game and act as though this is normal and give them a place in society that says, yes, you grown woman are really a hawk? Sure you are, of course. Here's some birdseed. Like at what point do we say, all right, this charade has gone too far and it's time to seek professional help? Or is that too drastic? Is that, is that animal phobic? <laughs> How did we get here? How 
did we get here? I think I know, and I'm gonna tell you guys how we got here at the ending of this video, so definitely stay tuned. But yeah, this person needs help. And I think us pretending that this is normal is only causing more harm. <sighs> Next video. Why can I choose my pronouns, but you can't choose not to be called cis? For the same reason white people can't use the N-word. You can. You'll just be called a racist for being a racist. Those are called consequences. Cis is not an identity, it's a descriptor, it's an adjective, just like transphobic or racist. And look, you cannot identify as racist if you want, but that doesn't mean that black people aren't gonna call you racist if you're white and use the N-word. And you cannot identify as transphobic if you want, but if you reject the term cis as a cis person like this, trans people are gonna call you transphobic. And that's it, that's your consequence. Now I know you could draw the conclusion, well then I'm not going to respect your pronouns. Okay. I can't make you. I can only tell you the impact it has on me when you don't. And then it's on you. Just know that there are two major differences that your side loves to ignore. The first is good faith. I have an honest and good faith belief that they and she pronouns accurately describe me. Nobody who has a problem being described as cis has an honest and good faith belief that it is an inaccurate term to describe them. Just like no white person who brings up the N-word has an honest or good faith belief that they want to say it. But they're excellent noise and a good distraction, and they sound like epiphanies when you don't challenge them under a lens of good faith. Second, and most importantly, is what you and I do with this disagreement just ignore each other? Letting the natural consequences of those actions or behaviors happen? No. People in your team, team not respecting pronouns or why can't white people say the N-word, have chosen added consequences. Violence and discrimination, and removing human rights. Okay, first of all, why is he dressed like, where's Waldo? I'm just trying to figure this out. <laughs> Am I the only one that sees it? Is it just me? What I hear from this person is a whole lot of emotional manipulation. That's what I hear. I hear somebody who's pretty much saying, if you don't affirm me, if you don't affirm my delusion, then you are responsible for violence. You are responsible for every bad thing that happens to every person that does not get affirmed in their identity. And what I say to that is, you don't get to manipulate people into having to co-sign your delusion. Just because I don't affirm you doesn't mean that I inherently want to harm you. It just means that I'm not going to co-sign your crazy. I'm not doing it. And I don't care how that makes you feel. I really don't care. Because at the end of the day, if you give power to my voice, that's on you. I love how these people always run to race, right? They always want to sort of co-sign the black experience when it comes to civil rights and when it comes to their their issues. It's always just like black people and white people saying the N-word, it's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. It's apples to oranges. And it's really offensive, I'm sure, to black Americans every single time people from this ideology, this gender cult, try and co-opt the black experience in order to gain sympathy points. See, black people were born black. They didn't have a choice. You chose to medically transition. That was your choice to make. There lies the difference. Well, those are the consequences. Okay, consequence. It's like, what are you talking about? If a woman does not want to be called cis, that is her prerogative. You, like James is smiling, cannot police women to use terms that they never had to use before just to accommodate you as a biological man. And what I find funny too is that most trans women do not like to be called trans women. They are just women. They don't want the trans before their womanhood because it devalues how they feel as a female. But yet you want biological women to adopt cisgendered women and they have to be okay with that. And if not, then they're bigots. If they're not, then they want violence to happen against you. If they're not, then they're racist. Next video. Yeah, I figured I would have to make this video at some point, so. Z's are pronouns, what they are, and how to use them, and where they came from. So, um, Z is an alternative pronoun to he, they, and she. Uh, it's not an identity, it's just a pronoun, anyone can use it. Basically, the idea is that they're just gender neutral pronouns that replace SH or H with X. I have this handy dandy little chart on how to use them. And gave you a little sec to screenshot there. So you might say Z took Zerkar to the store by himself. Um, Zzer is the second most common um, gender neutral pronoun used according to the 2019 gender census, second only to they them. I personally use these M pronouns because I don't really care for they. Like, if you don't know my gender, that's fine, but I went by they, them for two years, and it just doesn't really fit with me personally. Um, I also like that you can use it in a definitive singular tense, because sentences can kind of become muddy if you don't know if you're using they in the plural or singular. Absolutely, it could get muddy when it comes to grammar. Could you imagine if you were somebody who just learned the English language? 
<laughs> guys, I'm sorry. I'm over here editing right now at night and I noticed that as I'm editing at this portion of the video, there is a white hair just shining in my hair. Yeah. That's what happens when you have a Siberian Husky and it is spring shedding season. <laughs> so just FYI, if you see white hair, it's not gray hairs, it's just my Husky. Back to the video. Maybe your first language is Spanish or Portuguese and then you finally master English. You've taken English classes, you've studied it, you've taken courses, you're so excited, you finally are able to have general conversations with people when it comes to using proper English grammar. And then all of a sudden you get introduced <laughs> to this crap. <laughs> <laughs> where suddenly you're using they in a singular form and you have these extra words that have never been used before like zer and er and ear and it's like what <laughs> like I literally just learned the language and now I have to relearn it because you imagine being an English teacher in today's world and having to accommodate this bs you might as well fire me because I am not teaching this ain't happening <sighs> next video something keeps calling you back to this comment and I think it's the fact that like as a black woman you are using white supremacist talking points to defend your transphobia and that's really heartbreaking because do you realize that talking about things like bone structure is what white supremacists do to like separate themselves from black people like historically that's what they've done white supremacists have said that white people and black people have dna we're different species we have different bones we have different muscles as a way to be like black people, other. We don't want them around us. And now you're doing the same thing with trans women. Like that's, that's heartbreaking, especially because that same rhetoric will be used against you in the future. Transphobia is used against black women all the time. But sure, your bone structure makes you a woman. We should play a drinking game every single time a leftist cult member uses racism and white supremacy to argue for transgendered ideology. Why not? <laughs> This is so, this is so ridiculous. So here you have a woman trying to school a black woman and making the argument that she is for white supremacy. A black woman is for white supremacy because she had the nerve to bring up bone structure and biology in the conversation. Because of course, bringing up biology and science is, is like the, the ultimate sin when it comes to the leftist cult and gender ideology. Of course it is. Because now you're bringing up facts. Now you're bringing the receipts and we know they can't handle receipts. So what do they do? White supremacists racist done conversation closed first of all what the woman was talking about when she mentioned bone structure is that men and women biologically have different bone structures within our body why do you think someone like dylan mulvaney had to have face reconstruction surgery to feminize their face why because the dude had the face of a dude that's why and he wanted to feminize it you know why because biologically speaking he had a masculine face he had masculine features that is correlated to his bone structure wow who knew but yet this nut job is trying to make you seem as though that this black woman is speaking about bone structure in a way that dehumanizes trans people by saying oh they're not human their bones are not human they're dehumanized no she's not saying that she's talking about the differences between men and women she's talking about biology and i know that this lady knows that but she is going to play the crazy card and use white supremacy because when you have no actual argument this is where you go to just shut the conversation down and it's insanity and i'm seeing this trend over and over and over again online whenever somebody brings up a good fact or receipts it's always oh that's that's white supremacy oh you don't want to use cisgendered white supremacist uh, bone structure and biology white supremacist men and women are different based on biology and science white supremacist men have xy chromosomes white supremacist i mean it's literally their go-to it's their go-to and it's pathetic it's pathetic to tell a black woman that she is arguing for white supremacy because she's bringing up a scientific fact about the differences between men and women. I swear, I lose brain cells every time I watch these woke TikTokers. I, I can't, can't do it, guys. Next video. Let's talk about void self pronouns. Void self pronouns are neo pronouns inspired by the word void. And they can be used by anyone, regardless of gender identity or expression. They also may fall under the dehuman pronouns. And void, void pronouns were created in 2014. And they're used in the same way that they then pronouns are used. So you might say, I met void today. Or void went to the shop, if you are the individual who uses void, void pronouns. I actually like this pronoun a lot. I actually agree with it. So next time I hear a cultist speak to me about their pronouns, I'm going to just say void. 
<laughs> Next video. Yesterday, this well-meaning older gentleman asked me if I was depressed because I've been growing out my beard lately. I was like, no, I'm growing out my beard because I love myself and because I'm confident in my body. I did this little curtsy and he laughed and the whole room was smiling at me. It was a beautiful moment. And it was then I realized I'm finally stepping into my own power, enough to be vulnerable with the world. So I just want to encourage you today. There's no right way to be a woman, okay? <laughs> Let's just go ahead and break that binary. Some women have facial hair. Some women shave their armpits. Some don't. Some men have vaginas. Some women have penises. Get over it. <laughs> All right? So I challenge you today to love and express yourself recklessly. You're one of a kind, doll. So I, I just wish you the best of days and be safe out there, okay? I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> okay? Oh, Lord. I actually feel kind of sorry for this particular creator, this person, because watching that, it felt like they were trying to convince themselves that they were okay. It's almost as though he was trying to like convince himself that, oh, I'm normal, I'm okay. This is okay, this isn't weird, right? <laughs> of course not, of course not. <laughs> it is. Um, I hate to break the news to you, but biological women do not grow beards. Biological women do not have penises. I know, it's insane, it's, it's crazy, I know, but it's a thing. I mean, how disrespectful to biological women to say that their unique experience as biological women is not really that unique. Because a man who can't menstruate and a man who can't carry children and a man who will never understand the biological differences and challenges that a woman has to go through doesn't really matter because if he identifies as a woman, then he gets to take on the exact same struggles that you have. There's no difference. That, my friends, is called delusion. <sighs> no, women do not have bulges. No, men do not have vaginas. They don't. And no, women are not birthing people. Women are not bleeders. Women are not chest feeders. We have got to stop co-signing this type of mental craziness for the sake of being nice. Because being nice is what got us in this mess in the first place. And here's what I mean by that. So I sometimes get comments like what you're seeing up here, where if I speak about a topic like Dylan Mulvaney, for instance, I get comments from people who say, stop giving him attention. You're giving him what he wants. Why are we even talking about this? It's just so stupid. Don't talk about this anymore. And here's why I think that take is wrong and why that take is why we are in the mess that we're in today. See, every time we do this and we don't look at what's happening over there, that continues to grow and metastasize in society. And we're oblivious. And that's what we did for the past 20 years. We looked over here, didn't pay attention, didn't see what they were doing, how they were infiltrating schools, all types of institutions. And now, 20 years later, we're scratching our heads saying, how the heck did we get here? Why is it that half of Gen Z has gender dysphoria? Why is it that half of Gen Z is so confused about who and what they are? Why is it that half of Gen Z identifies as animals and dehumanizing creatures? Why? What the heck is going on? I'll tell you why. It's because we continue to bury our heads in the sand. We didn't pay attention. We wanted to be politically correct. So we walked on eggshells. And even though we knew what was happening over there, it was kind of weird, but we're not going to say anything because we don't want to be judgmental. And now look, now we have social contagion with these kids. It's like a freaking virus. So this is why I use my platform to speak on these issues. I know they're controversial. I know they're uncomfortable. I know they could be a bit much, but... My rationale is if I don't talk about these things, they're going to continue to grow and get worse and worse and worse in our society. It's already gotten really, really bad and it's only going to get worse. So we have to talk about it. We have to shine light to it. We have to talk about these people. We have to because the moment we stop, we give up. We throw our hands in the air and we say, it's fine. Do what you want to do with our kids. We don't care. No, keep talking about it. Keep addressing it. Keep putting a highlight on what's happening because the moment you stop, you then can't complain 10 years from now that things have gone crazy. And how did it get this bad? It got this bad because you kept ignoring what was happening in front of your face in exchange for political correctness and for a little badge that the woke cult gives you when you co-sign their crazy beliefs. I know because I used to be in that side. Not anymore. Speak your mind. If you enjoyed this content, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when I post a new video. I'm also available on TikTok and on Instagram on the Curly Boy Chuck, where I'm continuously being canceled just for you. No joke. And I'm also available on Rumble under Curly Boy Chuck. I have a referral link in my description. If you guys don't have Rumble, you can add it to your desktop or your tablet. Add me and let's fight world culture together. Until next time, peace.